Hey everyone, it's Haley, and today I wanted to talk about some YA contemporaries that came out this summer that I'm super excited about. So today's video is actually sponsored by the authors, but I am so excited to be able to help them out. So I have five books here to talk about, and I'm really excited for all of them. They sound like the perfect late summer reads, and I can't wait. The first book is You and Me at the End of the World by Brianna Bourne. This book is like a different take on the apocalypse, which is so great. Like, I love that all of these books are very unique. They are contemporaries with a little bit of a twist to them. In this case, the apocalypse has happened, and the main character, Hannah, she wakes up and finds the city completely empty except for this other guy named Leo and Leo of course is like devastatingly handsome charming but also kind of selfish but the two of them end up exploring the world together as they seem to be the only two left so they go around exploring trying to get answers to the obvious questions that they probably have but they also realize the freedom that comes with them being by themselves while it's isolating they also don't have the expectations of school or trying to play the roles that they have fallen into so they're able to truly be themselves for the first time. I think this book sounds really great. I love that idea of them finally being able to be themselves and I'm really interested to see like I feel like there's a mystery element to it as well that I want to know more about why they are by themselves, what happened, and what is going to happen next. The next book is The Night When No One Had Sex by Kalena Miller. I obviously that title is going to pull you in right away, but the concept for it sounds so amazing. So this is about a group of teenagers who end up making a pact. It's prom night, so it's that kind of pact, and they have this secluded cabin with a bunch of condoms and no parents. So they feel like it's going to be the perfect night and everything, but then everything that can go wrong ends up going wrong. Like everything's going wrong. This one character's fantasy role playing ends up getting her locked in a closet. The other character just got off the wait list for Yale and she's trying to figure out how to tell her girlfriend about that, how she feels about it. And then another character's grandmother has to undergo emergency surgery. So there are just a million things happening and they are not at all what they expected. Now this has a little twist because it's told alternating between the perspectives of the characters and their group group chat, which I think is so amazing. Like, I'm sure we all have been in a group chat where there are just so many things happening and it's a really fun and funny place and I definitely have been in a few of those and I love the idea of having their group chat incorporated into the story. I think that is going to be a lot of fun. So definitely one that I'm really excited about. This one is the only one of these books that isn't out yet. This is coming out September 7th, but I'll have a link down below for you guys to pre-order as well as a link for all of these books if you wanted to check them out. Next is The Summer of Lost Letters by Hannah Reynolds. So this is a little bit a mix of contemporary with historical fiction, and I usually love that. In this case, the main character ends up receiving these love letters that her grandmother, they were written for her by this mysterious boy named Edward, and she's very confused by it because they know very little about her grandmother's history. They know that she was born in Germany but ended up fleeing when she was five to the States because of the Holocaust, but these letters are kind of painting a little bit of a different picture. It came from her grandmother's mansion in Nantucket, so she ends up going to Nantucket for the summer to uncover more of this family mystery that has unraveled, but while she's there, she also meets the handsome grandson of the Edward who was writing her grandmother letters. So I'm really interested to see what the grandmother story is. I feel like it's kind of going to be two stories at the same time, and that sounds really cool and very interesting. Like, you're gonna have the story of the main character in present day, and then also the story of the grandmother and Edward and I feel like it's going to be kind of mirroring love stories and that sounds great. Next is In the Same Boat by Holly Green. So this follows this Texas canoe race where they race for like 265 miles and it's over the course of days so they have to do it in like the pitch black and it's very dangerous and the main character is entering this race because last year she ended up ending her father's 20 year streak of finishing it and she was the cause of why he didn't finish it. So now her father, she knows like he's looking at her not the same way anymore. He's really upset about it. So to try and redeem her, 
herself, she's entering the race with her brother. But then, at the last minute, her brother ends up ditching her for another team, so the only person left that she can team up with is her ex-best friend, now enemy. So, I feel like I'm seeing where things are going here, like he got handsome, so there's a little bit of tension there. I think it's going to be really great, definitely a different concept. I love the concept of this canoe race, like, it kind of reminds me of Wolf by Wolf because that was a motorcycle race, very, very, very different, but it just seems very interesting. And the final book that I have to talk about today is Words Composed of Sea and Sky by Erica George. This book deals with writing and writers, actually poets and poetry in particular. So the main character wants to go to art school. She wants to express herself. She loves poetry. Her family isn't supportive of that dream. So she enters a contest where it is to write the epitaph for this monument that they are having. Is epitaph the right word? Like the plaque. For this monument that they're putting up for this whaler in Cape Cod that was very famous and she's kind of wondering like why this whaler is so famous but then she ends up discovering the diary a poet from back then in the 1860s who knew this whaler and she's kind of getting a different perspective on things. This once again is a blend of contemporary and history and I'm so excited to learn more about it. It seems really like I don't really know what the connection is going to be there but I'm definitely intrigued by it. So those are all the books that I had to talk about today. Thank you so much to the authors for sponsoring me. All of these books are out now except for The Night When No One Had Sex, but that one can be pre-ordered. So I will have a link down below for you guys to check all of these out. But that's going to be all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in a new one soon. Bye!